Okay, so 7 to the power of 510 is really close to 10 to the power of 431. But if we actually calculate the difference between these two numbers, if we do 7 to the 510 minus 10 to the 431, the difference between them is actually a number with 425 digits. So it seems like they're nowhere near each other. So what do we mean when we say that they're approximately equal to each other? Well, if we think about this in terms of the sense of scale, the scale we're working at here, both of these numbers have actually got 432 digits each. So if the difference between them has only got 425 digits, that's not too bad considering the scale we're working at. We can make this a little bit more formal by calculating the percentage error. So if you imagine we use 7 to the 510 to approximate 10 to the 431, we can calculate the percentage error just by finding the difference and dividing this by 10 to the 431. So as a decimal, we get 0 0.000 0, 0, 0, 0000009 followed by some more digits for our percentage error. So to turn this into a percentage, this is approximately equal to then 0.00009%. So you can see in terms of percentage error, this is actually a really good approximation for 10 to the power of 431. So in this video, we're going to look at where this approximation came from, and we'll see how we could come up with other approximations, not just using 7 and 10. So the key idea is we're looking for two powers, one power of 7 and one power of 10. So you could say we want 7 to the power of m to be approximately equal to 10 to the power of n. We can make this a little bit more formal. Let's actually say that 7 to the m is equal to k times 10 to the n, where here we want k to be approximately equal to 1 so that it's a good approximation. So to see how we can choose values of m and n so that we get a good approximation, we're just going to do some manipulation of this equation using logarithms. So if we take log to the base 10 of both sides, we get log to the 10, 7 to the m is equal to log to the base 10 of k times 10 to the n. So then using the laws of logarithms, we can take out this power of m, so we get m times log to the base 10 of 7 is now equal to, if we split up this product into log to the base 10 k plus log to the base 10 10 to the n, don't forget that log to the base 10 of 10 to any power is just going to be that power. So here we just get log to the 10 of 10 to the n is just equal to n. Now if we divide on both sides by m, we get log to the base 10 of 7 is equal to log to the base 10 k over m plus n over m. So now we're looking for k to be approximately equal to 1. So this means that we want log to the base 10 of k. Log to the base 10 of 1 is 0, so we want this to be as close to 0 as possible. So we want log to the base 10 of k to be as close to 0 as possible. So this means we want to choose our n and m so that in order for this to be 0, we'll have n over m approximately equal to log to the base 10 of 7. So we want n over m roughly equal to log to the base 10 of 7, or as close to this as possible. But actually this doesn't guarantee that log to the 10 of k is going to be close to 0, because we could do this, have something that's roughly equal to log to the base 10 of 7, but if m was really big, then this term would still be very small, while log to the base 10 of k could still be quite big. So as well as needing n over m approximately equal to log to the base 10 of 7, we also want to balance this with having m small. So we just write in brackets here, we want m to be small. So looking at the decimal expansion of log 7, one approach that comes to mind is we could actually just round the decimal expansion to get a rational number. So for example, if we take the first three decimal places, 0 0.845, we can turn this into a fraction. 845 over 1000, which we can use as our approximation for log 7. And taking more and more decimal places, you can get as close as you like to log 7 with this approach. But keeping in mind that we want to have m as small as possible here, the issue with this approach is our denominator m is always going to be a power of 10 with this approach by converting the decimal into a fraction. Or if you simplify the fraction, our denominator has to still be a factor of a power of 10. So we're actually missing out a lot of potential denominators where that fraction could actually maybe give us a better approximation for log 7. 
So instead of taking this approach, we're going to take a slightly more sophisticated approach using continued fractions. And it's actually possible to show that using continued fraction, this gives us, in a sense, the best possible fractional approximation for our number, in the sense that if we have, using continued fractions, a fraction n over m, it's not possible to get a better approximation without making m the denominator bigger. So let's see how we do this using continued fractions. So we've got log 7 as this decimal, and all we're going to do to begin with is just write this as 1 over 1 over itself, so we haven't changed anything here. But then looking at the reciprocal, 1 over 0 0.845, we get 1 over 0 0.845 dot 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 is equal to 1.183 and so on. So then what we'll do is split this up into 1 plus 0 0.183. So we have 1 over 1 plus 0 0.183 dot 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 and then we'll apply the same procedure to our 0.183 term here. So we can write this as 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 over 0 0.183 and so on. So then we'll do the same thing with our reciprocal of 0 0.183. It turns out this is 1 over 0 0.183 dot dot dot. We can write as 5.455 and so on. So then we can replace this by 5 plus 0 0.455 dot dot dot. So we can write this as 1 over 1 plus, then we have 1 over 5 plus 0 0.455. Then we'll do the same thing again with our 0 0.455, write it as 1 over 1 over 0 0.455. So 1 over 0 0.455, we actually get 2.194 and so on. So then we can rewrite this. I'll skip the step where I write this as 1 over 1 over 0 0.455, but then we can write this as 1 over 1 plus 1 over 5 plus, then 1 over 1 over 0 0.455 gives us 1 over 2.194, so 1 over 2 plus 0 0.194, and so on. So you can see even at this point we could perhaps just replace this 0 0.194 by 0 or perhaps by 0 0.2, and you would get a decent approximation to log to the base 10 of 7. We'll apply this a few more times, and then we'll get a nice fractional approximation which we'll use to find values of n and m. And now we'll apply the same procedure to our 0 0.194 and so on term here. So we write it as 1 over 1 over itself, and then we can calculate 1 over 0 0.194 and so on, this is equal to 5.142 and so on. So then we can replace our 1 over 0 0.194 by 5 plus 0 0.142 and so on. Then we'll apply the same procedure to our 0 0.142 term. We take 1 over 1 over itself. So when we calculate 1 over 0 0.142 dot dot dot, we actually get 6.999 and more digits. So you can see here, this is going to be really close to 7. So actually, this is the point at which we're going to stop for our continued fraction. Now, if we were to continue going further and further down, we would get better and better approximations. But for our purposes here, we're just going to stop and say that this is approximately equal to 7. So this tells us then that our 0 0.194 term is approximately equal to 1 over 5 plus so now the reciprocal of 0 0.142 is approximately 7, so we write this as 5 plus 1 seventh. So then this is really helpful now because then we can conclude that our approximation for log to the base 10 of 7 is going to be, it's approximately equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 over 5 plus, then 1 over 2 plus, then our 0 0.194 dot 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 term we replace by 1 over 5 plus 1 seventh. So now the next thing we need to do is take this continued fraction, then we'll convert this back into a regular fraction where we can find our values of n and m. So now to evaluate this continued fraction, we're going to essentially start at the bottom and work upwards. So if we just start with this 1 over 5 plus 1 seventh term, we can write 1 over 5 plus 1 seventh, calculating 5 plus 1 seventh, we can write this as 1 over 36 sevenths, and then 1 over this will just give us 7 over 36. So all of this term we can replace now by 7 36. 
So then we move on to the next piece. We'll just do this one piece at a time. So 1 over 2 plus 7 36. And when we calculate 2 plus 7 36, you get 79 over 36. And then 1 over this gives us 36 over 79. So then all of this term here is just 36 over 79. So we can write 1 over 5 plus this term as 1 over 5 plus 36 over 79. So now to evaluate all of this term, we just do the same thing. 5 times 79 plus 36 gives us 431. So we get 431 over 79. And then 1 over this gives us 79 over 431 for all of this term. So now we're almost done. We just need to do 1 over 1 plus all of this term to 1 over 1 plus 79 over 431. We get 1 over, so you do 431 plus 79 gives us 510. So 1 over 510 over 431, which gives us 431 over 510. So this gives us our fraction then. We take n is equal to 431 and m is equal to 510. So then we can conclude in a sense then that taking n as 431, m as 510, we can say that 7 to the power of our m, 510, should be approximately equal to 10 to the power of our n, 10 to the power of 431. So this is where this approximation comes from.